Hi, my name is Katie and I am an analytics engineer with Seek. Welcome to part three of the video series, How to Scale Analyses Over Many Assets with Seek. In part three, we are going to create this organizer topic dashboard using the visualizations we created in parts one and two. Here is an example of what it will look like when it's done. Okay, so here I am on the Seek home screen. I will open up a new organizer topic by selecting the new dropdown and organizer topic. This will open up a blank organizer topic and I will give the document a name calling it wind turbine dashboard. Right now the document is entirely blank. So to give it some structure and to set me up to create a really nice looking dashboard, I'm going to insert a template. I will navigate to the green seek queue in the upper left and select templates. You can see it gives me several options of dashboards and reports I could start with using different colors, different numbers of rows and columns and formats. I'm going to select the template here at the bottom, this monitoring template, and then I can review it to make sure it's what I want. When I decided that's the one I want to use, I'll go ahead and insert it into the document. Templates are a new feature in version R59, but if you don't yet have this version of Seek, I will show you how to create this structure manually as well. The template we created is basically a table in Seek, and we can build our own using the organizer topic tables function. To create a table, I can use the table icon in the toolbar. I can select the number of columns and rows I would like. Here, I will just start by with a two by eight. Then I can use the editing options to merge cells together to create a header row. And I can also set the color using the color selectors or by adding my own hex color. And there are many options you could use to make the table look just like the template I have or however you would like. Now that you know how you could create this template, I'm going to jump back to that template I inserted and I'll start adding content. I will place my cursor where I want to insert the content. I will navigate to the green seek queue. There are a couple ways to do it. You can either add content using a link or by choosing the worksheet from organizer topic. And I'll first show you how to do it by choosing the worksheet. I will select the workbench analysis my content is in and then I will select the worksheet with the correct visual. It will open a content properties box and I will just leave the defaults for now and insert this into the document. Now I have a tree map visual that is linked back to the workbench analysis I inserted it from. The next thing I will do is configure the date range I want for the content. For this tree map, I would like to monitor the last one hour. So here I'm going to use this plus button to add a date range and I'll name the date range last one hour. I will make this an auto updating date range so that it automatically updates on a set schedule and I will select one hour. Then I will hit next and that created the date range. Now it will prompt me to attach it to content, so I will select the piece of content I want to attach it to. It will then ask me how I want to set up the auto updating schedule. In this case, I want the date range to update live, meaning only update when I have the dashboard open in a browser window. And it asks me then to select how often I want the content to be updating. In this case, one hour is plenty. You can see now that I have a new auto updating date range and the auto updating schedule is set for the next hour. And keep in mind that you can have multiple date ranges in one organizer topic. I can edit any of these by clicking on the edit button. And I could also edit the tree map by clicking on it and selecting the seat queue or by navigating to the edit button next to the seat content summary. Next, I want to add trend view content in the lower left hand side of the table. This time I'm going to insert the content using a link and I have already created the trend view content in the workbench analysis. So I will navigate back there to show you that content. Here you can see I have a new worksheet called trend view with the content I want to see on the screen. To insert this content using a link, 
I will copy the URL of this workbench analysis and that specific worksheet. Then I will navigate back to the organizer topic document. And again, I will select the green seek queue. And instead of selecting worksheet, I will select link. Here, I will paste the link. If it is a valid link, it shows up green. If not, it will show up red. And again, the content properties box opens up like it did before. Since this is a trend view, I have the option to select whether I want the content to be interactive. This allows me to see the cursor values as I hover over the trend. Since I already have created a date range, I can select it in the dropdown. Then I'll insert the trend. Now I want to configure an asset selection in this organizer topic so that I can swap the tags in the trend between different turbines. To do that, I will navigate to the asset selections box and click the plus button. This brings up a new box that looks similar to the data pane in my workbench analysis. And you can see the asset group at the top. Note that you do need to insert content from a worksheet that contains an asset group in order to see the asset group in this data pane. And in versions prior to R58, to find an asset group, you will need to search for it using the name you gave it in the workbench analysis. So here I will give it a name, and then I will click into the asset group and select one of the assets. This will create the initial asset selection, and then I will be able to select any of these from the dropdown. I will hit next and assign it to my content. Now I can use the asset selections dropdown to select whichever asset I would like to view in the trend. Depending on how you have the content set up, it can be difficult to tell which asset is selected for each piece of content. To make it more clear, we can add an asset label to the document. Again, to insert this, we will navigate up to the seek queue and select asset label. Then when we click on the asset label, we can configure which asset selection it is linked to. Right now we only have one. Then we can use the text editor to make it a different color and a different style. Now, when we switch assets, the label will change along with the content. Similarly to an asset label, we can also insert a date range label. I will insert a row in the table so I can add the date range label right below the title. Then I will again navigate to the seat queue and select date range label. I can click on the label to configure which date range I want to link it to and configure the content format. Here, I want to see the start time to end time, and I will pick the predefined format that tells me the exact hour of the day as well. All right, now I will insert the rest of the content. I will use the worksheet method for the last two. Here, selecting the workbench analysis and the log table, making it interactive since I like how the table looks in this format, and selecting the date range and asset selection. And then finally, I'll insert the chart. Again, I want this to be interactive because it gives me the option to toggle between table and chart view and highlight bars as I hover over them. I'll also select the correct date range, and I don't actually need the asset selector here because it is already looking over all the assets, just like the tree map. Now I have a dashboard with a great overview of each of the turbines at the top, and I can use these to identify the problems quickly. Then I can delve into the details using the asset selection and looking more closely at the trend and log table at the bottom. All right, let's see how it looks in view only mode before we share it with our coworkers. We'll navigate to the share button in the upper right and then go down to the get link section and open the view only version of the document. I can change the asset selection and I can click on any of these visuals to navigate into the workbench analysis. So here I'll click on tree map and it opens up the workbench analysis in view only mode so that I can see more detail on what is happening. I could click the journal links or delve into each of these items, adding more signals and scrolling around in time, but I can't change anything permanently in view only mode. If I do wanna change something, I can toggle here to edit mode up in the top right. And now I can edit this workbench. In order for my coworkers to view this document, I do need to give them access. So let's navigate to the top right and give my coworker Mark access to the workbench analysis. I don't want him to be able to change anything, so I'll just give him read access and save it. Next, I will just need to share the organizer topic dashboard with him so he can also monitor it as well. 
Now Mark will be able to view the items in the organizer topic and navigate into this workbench analysis. And finally, I will copy this view only link so I can send it to Mark and he can navigate directly to this monitoring dashboard. All right, that wraps up the series on how to scale analyses over many assets with Seek. Thank you for watching.